Hi everybody, this is Joshua Kirk, back with you guys once again on YouTube. And now it's time for episode 59 of Album of the Day. And, uh, like, uh, uh, before we get into it, I'd just like to say that, like, uh, I'm, like, pretty much getting back on to doing reviews. Uh, by that I mean, like, I'm getting back on to, like, doing reviews constantly, because I'm getting a lot of inspiration right now, so... So I'm really going somewhere in terms of, like, me finally finding inspiration and, you know, just kind of, uh, doing it no matter what. Hmm. So, uh, but anyway, aside from that, let's get right to it. Today's, um, singer-songwriter is, um, an artist, uh, from, uh, California who, um, I, you might know him, like, if you're familiar with, uh, Jack Johnson or... G Love and Special Sauce and uh, artists like that. Uh, you're probably familiar with this artist that I'm here to talk about, who's on uh, Jack Johnson's Brushfire Records label, um, who sort of does kind of soft rock, you know, alternative kind of stuff. Uh, it's an artist by the name of Matt Costa, um, and uh, he pretty much, you know, got some attention through signing with Jack Johnson's Brushfire label and touring with him along with like G Love and Special Sauce and artists like that. So I'm here to review his uh Matt Costa's third album released uh on September twenty first, two thousand and ten. The album is called Mobo Chateau. Um and uh I I have two versions of this. I have the C D here, which I got um at a record store in Phoenix, Arizona called Stinkweeds. And then I have the vinyl version of it, which I got at a record store in Hanover, Pennsylvania called um, Off the Record. Um, it's like a coffee shop slash record store pretty much. It sells, that sells a lot of old school records along with a few like, you know, kind of alternative indie stuff, uh, which, uh, included this album in there, um, and, uh, but anyway, um, here's the cover, give me a closer look, there's the cover, the spine, and, uh, the back, and the songs on here are The Season, Johnny's Love of Magic, Drive, Mobo Chateau, um, can You Tell Me, Idol, Witchcraft, Painted Face, Bleeding Hearts, Secret, Strings of Change, and Next Time. Um, so anyway, I'm going to you know, show you the inside. Some really cool artwork on this. Um, it sort of fits in with kind of the aesthetic of the album. Since... This is a little different from uh, his first couple of albums. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, but anyway, it's got lyrics. Sorry, you can't see them too well. This is so bright. And uh, I'm going to show you um, uh, the CD. Mm. Which has like kind of a golden color on it. Mm. And then I'll show you the vinyl. Since there's something cool about it, I'd like to show you. Mm. 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 And then there's the lyrics. This is like even better than the CD because you get a big thing full of lyrics. And here's the cool part. Uh, the color of this vinyl is like red and black. So it's a distinctive little vinyl color going on there. So anyway, there's side A. And then there's side B. So, you know. 
really cool to have, like, it's pretty rare when I get a vinyl with this kind of color, but it's pretty cool. Mm. So that's uh, the vinyl of Mobile Shadow and the CD too. So so anyway, um, once again, just like I did in my previous review of Spoon's Telefono, um, I'm uh, gonna like uh, just give an overall view of the whole record. So musically, it's uh, it's a little different from his first two albums, Songs We Sing and Unfamiliar Faces. It was really unfamiliar faces when he started to grow in popularity, uh, where he kind of delivered a bunch of catchy, you know, fun, you know, like pop rock tunes, uh, rock tunes. Uh, so, so it had a really kind of sunny sound to it. Um, this album, on the other hand, has a little bit of a different sound. So, this is a kind of album that may appeal to anyone. Uh, who really likes indie artists like Modest Mouse or The Shins or um, Fleet Foxes. So this is kind of a record where it's a good album. Uh, like, it's a good album, but it kind of depends, you know, what your tastes are on how you, on how you will respond to this record. You may be disappointed because uh, some of you may be expecting something that sounds like Matt Costa's early work, but you know, you might be pleased and it might speak to you if uh, if you're really into indie rock like Slater, Kenny, or The Shins. So that's kind of, you know, where kind of some of the inspiration comes from this album. Uh, like, like not only does it sound kind of like an indie album, but also like, um, it also kind of like, it also has like a wide variety of instruments. like. Matt Costa like produced this thing himself um, and played a majority of the instruments. I mean he had extra musicians like he had a few bandmates on here um, guitarist Danny Garcia uh, uh, bassist Rob Rowe and uh, and uh, drummer uh, Jonah Wilder um, but you know, for the most part, it was a lot of it was him pretty much playing a lot of the instruments. Um, like, uh, and there's a ton of really unique sounds going on in this album, uh, and a ton of like you know weirdish instruments that uh, Matt Costa can be heard playing on here. Um, so like, uh, it has kind of some Beatles magical mystery tour esque elements to it on songs like The Season and uh, Secret. Um, and, uh, and then of course you're getting a little bit of kind of, you know, spaghetti western inspired like Latin sounding like tango-esque kind of tunes like uh, Can You Tell Me, Bleeding Hearts, uh, and Strings of Change. Um, and then, of course, you get some simple, like, uh, you know, alternative rock going on, too, with songs like Johnny's Love of Magic, uh, and, uh, with Johnny's Love of Magic, and, uh, Witchcraft, which kind of sounds like a song maybe The Shins could have done off of maybe Shoots Too Narrow or something like that, which is my favorite Shins album. Um, and, and then, of course, you get a... Uh, some other elements that you get include things like you get a little bit of, you know, um, kind of this circus, like kind of, kind of the circus, like Baroque pop feel to the song Painting Face, um, to the song Painted Face, uh, and then the end of Witchcraft has a weird little, like, uh, 
almost kind of Greek thing going on with uh, the loot on at the end, pretty much, which kind of leads into painting face. I uh, painted painted face. I'm sorry, I'm getting it mixed up here. Um, and uh, this, and uh, plus the lyrics on here are really like inventive and very kind of, you know. So it's like an album that's like kind of weird, but at the same time, kind of, but at the same time enticing and thrilling like uh you know like uh, the song like can you tell me is one of my favorite songs on the album because it's you know just got you know like the latin feel of it just you know just just sounds so you know cool in my opinion um so it's and of course there's some inventive songwriting on here like can you tell me kind of talks about you know getting the tools uh, to, to create a, a masterpiece like of a like so so it's kind of a so can you tell me it's kind of about like kind of references like painting pictures kind of comparing it to um, kind of comparing it to like you know something beautiful pretty much uh, pretty much uh, so so like uh, there are references to painting pictures on the song Can You Tell Me, and then there's talk about like some amazing circus performers on a painted face, including like violins with beating drums, and like uh, so, so obviously, you know, so Painted Face is a song kind of obviously talking about pretty much what entices people about circus performers, pretty much. Um, and then, uh, like, there are a little bit of songs about, like, fear and pain on songs like, uh, 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 Bleeding Hearts and, uh, Witchcraft. Um, I also forgot to mention one song that, in particular, uh, the one song in here that kind of sounds like Matt Costa's early work on here would have to be the song Mobile Chateau, the title track. Very simple instruments, just an acoustic guitar accompanied by a lap steel, some percussion, and uh, some, like, along with uh, a bunch of, like, uh, multi-tracked harmonies from Matt himself. Um, and plus, uh, like, you know, the guest musicians do some pretty nice accompaniment on this album, too. Like, Rob Rowe uh, adds his distinctive vocals to uh, the song Idol, which kind of has kind of a almost soul fairy kind of feel to it. Um, like it has a weird little like uh, intro that sounds so lo-fi, uh, but then eventually it turns into kind of the song which is kind of Costa's nod to like, you know, uh, soul, to kind of like, you know, uh, soul music almost. Um, <laughs> most. Um, and, uh, and then I uh, like, you know, the song Johnny's Love of Magic has kind of a, you know, kind of a country feel with the pedal steel on there. Um, Drive has kind of, has this really like just fun kind of, you know, peppy piano thing going on with it. Which uh, isn't Matt Costa's lyrics. Um, Bob Lynn wrote the lyrics to that. Matt Costa just wrote like, you know, the piano melody and all that stuff. Um, and I'd also like to talk about like a specific uh, instruments on here that are like kind of weirdish going on. Like uh, for example, uh, um, the season has kind of a, a fool on the hill type of uh, like on like uh, the season has like a uh, like a fool on the hill kind of uh, arrangement going on with it. So it, so it kind of sounds like that a little bit especially with the use of the bass harmonica on there. Um, there's the use of a harpsichord and a lute and an auto harp on a, the song Painted Face, so there's a lot of stuff going on on that one. Um, and Matt Costa even plays the trumpet on a few songs, like specifically Strings of Change, uh, Drive, and uh, most notably Audible on a Bleeding Hearts. Um, in fact, uh, what's really cool is that when, whenever, um, whenever Matt Costa like, you know, played that song live, he he'd do a trumpet solo in the middle. So it was the first time he brought in a trumpet on there, 
So, so, so who knew someone who has no trumpet training whatsoever, who would pick up a guitar most of the time, would be willing to branch out and pick up something new, pretty much. That's, that's pretty much what I love about this album. Matt Costa's, like, got some guts to try new things and, you know, kind of, you know, go from there. So, so like, so, so that's what entices me about this album. All the different sounds he's experimenting with on here. Uh, like, like, sometimes when an artist tries new sounds, it, they kind of lose some of their magic a little bit. But, you know, when Matt Costa does it, he still keeps his magic in there. So, so like, uh, keeps his magic on there. Like, uh, like, 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 I will admit this, like, I really, um, I will admit this. I really like Jack Johnson. I, I think he's, a, I think he's a good artist, but, you know, but, you know, he just kind of plays it safe. So, so, so I kind of applaud Matt Costa for kind of going beyond anything Jack Johnson would try, pretty much. Um, like, uh, and of course, uh, the, the pedal steel that I mentioned on a Johnny's Love of Magic. Um, and, uh, and, and then of course there's like a, a ton of different percussion instruments going on in this album. Like, uh, there are some bongos on the song Can You Tell Me, uh, which uh, Matt Costa didn't play any percussion instruments on that song, so, you know. Uh, so, so I'm not really sure who did the bongos on that one, but there's like bongos on that track. Um, and then there's like some really weird like organ going on on it too. Um, like a little bit of traditional organ playing, but then Matt Costa plays this weird little like 60s kind of organ on here too. Um, going on here too. Um, and then of course, um, there, there's uh, the the basics, and of course there's the usual suspects too: guitars, piano, bass, drums, whatnot. Um, which kind of makes sense because Costa's songs are mostly uh, it involved around like uh, you know guitar and piano most of the time. Um, most of the time. Um, so uh, this album, I think, is like. A, it took a little while for it to grow on me, like, you know, I wasn't really digging it the first few listens, but, you know, but it started to grow on me. Like, like I think it was really when I got it on vinyl when it really started to, you know, catch my ear with, uh, with, with thrill, pretty much. So, like, uh, it's like a different album, but, like, and sure, it's, uh, it's still very simple, like, it's still... Like, it isn't really, like, an emotional hell ride or anything like that. Uh, but still, like, it's, it's a very, like, uh, thrilling listen. And, 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 uh, since, and, uh, dude, and since my taste revolves around kind of creative indie kind of stuff, uh, I really love Mobile Chateau. I, th I think it's a, uh, I think it's a, it's a great album by Matt Costa. And by far, probably the best Matt Costa has ever sounded. Uh, so I so I think I like this album better than his first two albums. I mean, Unfamiliar Faces has good songs on it, and so does Songs We Sing. But this is really the album where it really kind of, you know, kind of struck a chord with me and uh, you know really connected with me. So it's, so I would give Mobile Chateau um, um, an eight out of ten because. It's got a really unique sound to it. Um, uh, it's got a ton of uh, different, like, uh, unusual instruments on it. Um, for, like, uh, unusual instruments on it. Um, and just, you know, uh, uh, some inventive songwriting, too. Um, and uh, just, uh, all in all, uh, a brilliant album that, you know, uh, like, like this, like this is an album that may disappoint anyone asking, uh, oh, not asking, um, like, uh, this is a kind of album that, that may disappoint anyone, uh, accepting, like, like, uh, expecting, like, uh, another from Unfamiliar Faces or something like that, 
but it will certainly appeal to anyone who's really open to a unique sound and loves indie rock like I do. So, 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 so that's my review on Mobile Chateau, and uh, I'll see you for episode 60. Wow, 60 episodes already. Mm-hmm.